Part of an 11-2 run late for the Golden State Warriors. A pretty play in the middle of a night that uh, featured a couple of ugly moments for star players. End result, Warriors get the win and take a 2-0 lead in their best of seven second round series with the Houston Rockets. Postgame coverage has begun here on NBA TV with coaches Vogel and Fratello. I'm Matt Weiner. Good to have you with us. Um, the officiating thing, basically a dud tonight, right? It was kind of a non-story for the most part. Uh, the biggest story that I was injuries to two star players, two MVPs in the NBA who went out within minutes of each other. Steph Curry dislocated the middle finger on his left hand, had to leave the game in the first quarter. A few minutes later, James Harden was poked in the left eye. He had to exit as well. Both wound up finishing the game, but it's just hard to say what's going to happen here as the series goes on and how those injuries are going to play out. If there is one good thing, it's the fact that they don't play again until what, Saturday? Saturday, they're right. So they've got three full days uh, to get some rest and recovery. Yeah, but it did give the game a strange complexion. You know, all, all throughout the game, you're wondering if Steph is impacted by his hand injury. And clearly, you could see James's eyes were, uh, were red and uh, probably bothering him as well. Right. Curry came back with his uh, two fingers taped together to protect that dislocation. And you see Harden get poked right there by Draymond Green. And as Coach Vogel said, for the rest of the night, you can see him blinking and squinting and shading his eyes and every time there was a close-up when he was at the free throw line or somewhere else where he was stationary you could see a red blotch on his eye and it, there's just no telling how it's going to react over the next couple of days yeah you don't know and, and it was very reminiscent of lebron james in the finals last year who had a similar type of incident uh, that impacted one of his games in terms of what happened on the floor tonight uh golden state you know wasn't overwhelming offensively they shot 46 percent they hit 11 threes not on a great percentage what what was working for him tonight coach i thought they played with high energy and they moved the basketball they found open people uh houston shot itself in the foot a little bit by uh, turning the basketball over 18 times which led to 24 points and you turn it over against golden state without looking you probably know their fast break numbers are pretty high and and their numbers tend to be higher than most people because when they fast break they end it with a three right not a layup or a two and they cut down on their own turnovers as well which is you know at, at their worst that is a problem That's for them they had 20 in yeah. game one and they limited that number to 12 tonight yeah much more efficient offensively um you know they played through the post uh, with with kd uh, as with him scoring as the last option. Every time the ball goes in the post with Golden State, they're going to explore three, four, five cuts uh, before the post player even thinks about, about scoring. And, you know, they got some easy buckets at the, at the rim, uh, got some open threes out of the post, okay? And when that was guarded well, KD goes to work one-on-one. -on -one. It's kind of interesting when you look at this box score and you notice that field goal attempts at the end of the games. 91 for Golden State, just 77 for Houston. That's a combination of the difference in turnovers mm -hmm. and 18 offensive rebounds yes. for Golden State. You get? <laughs> do you want to play around and give Golden State that many more shots against you? 18 offensive rebounds is a huge, huge number. They did seem throughout the game to be first to, to the loose balls, you know, right? And uh, you know that was throughout the game. There was a couple runs that were uh, sparked by by offensive rebounds by Golden State, and you see the uh, rebounding totals at the end. All right, getaway night for the Rockets, and Mike D'Antoni has gotten himself to the microphone in Oakland. Kelly Gold, the athletic coach, with the series being this tight, is it going to come down to the things like offensive rebounds, you know, turnovers, loose balls, and stuff like that? Well, yeah, I mean, it usually always does. Tonight, especially in the first half, we had way too many turnovers. They had, we had 14 turnovers and cost us 20 points. We took care of the ball the second half. And right there, so there's some things we can do. We can adjust some uh, some situations that we didn't do a real good job tonight. Not as not as good as they did. And you know, I just thought we showed a lot of heart with a lot of adversity on the floor. Didn't give up, and um, they did what they're supposed to do. They won their two home games. Now, if we're good enough, we'll win our two home games and come back here for Game Five. But um, obviously, we're gonna have to play a little bit better. Anthony Slater with The Athletic. How big a problem is what Draymond Green's doing right now as a small ball center? Well, it's always a problem. I mean, he's a, he's an all-star for a reason, and he's really good and kind of a point guard at the center or a four position. And, you know, he um, plays well. He's a heck of a player.
Mike, Mark Berman from Fox Houston. Could you talk about uh, how James played second half, what you thought about what he went through after getting the, in after getting the injury? <clears throat> oh, he fought through some stuff. I mean, the guy, you know, looked like he was, you know, not in great shape the first half. I think he might have cleared up a little bit, but he got he got raked pretty good in the eyes. And uh, But that's him. I mean, I didn't have a doubt he's coming back unless it was something catastrophic. So. <laughs> I'm sure he would have loved to have played better, but under the circumstances, I thought he played great. And you know, we had our chances down toward the end. We were on three or four down, and, and they made big plays. We just didn't didn't get it done. Jonathan Fagan, Houston Chronicle. In that stretch you just alluded to, uh, you're within three, and then they score on about four or five straight possessions. Is it just their excellence, or are there things well, that you wanted to correct there that gave up some of those shots? It's always a little bit of both. Uh, Kevin Durant one on one uh, is you know one of the best scorers the league's ever seen and uh, he made he made some shots I thought thought that overall we did a good job we just it's like you know if we have it back it's like four or five plays that we just have to be more solid we laid on a screen or they got threes right and we just got to do a better job and we will and. Uh, like I said, we'll, we'll have to adjust some of the things that we do down the stretch and try to take the ball out of his hands. But, uh, you know, this is against a good team, good players, and they they played well. Colin Ward-Henninger, CBSSports.com. Um, anytime a superstar goes out, it's obviously more difficult. But for the load that James carries for you guys, what's it like during those minutes when he's out and you're not sure if he's going to come back? Well, it's, it's tough sledding. Uh, you know, a lot of us... Love what we do, but at the same time, I thought we did a good job of kind of riding the ship and give us a chance toward the end. Um, it just means you know Chris and Eric and those guys got to play a lot more minutes, but uh, um, I thought we overcame that pretty well. As a matter of fact, Wes Goldberg with Forbes. Was there an effort to right in the middle? Was there an effort to get uh, Clint Capella involved in the in the second half a little bit more than in the first no. half? Now we do the same thing every time. And if they guard us a certain way where James and Chris feel that he's more open or whatever, they're just reading the play. And there's no, you know, it's not, we don't target people. We target, we have plays, we run them, and whoever's open just got to read it. And it could be him, could be Eric, could be Gerald, or could be Austin, whoever's open gets it, and they got to make a play. Any other questions? John Dickinson, 95-7, the game. Uh, Mike, wh what do you think of the way the Warriors have defended the lob game in particular with Capella? What, what have they done that's made that problematic for you guys? Well, they're good at it because Draymond comes, he fakes it and goes back to Clint. And, you know, we probably have to go a little bit stronger to the rim and finish. Uh, you know, they're, they're smart. They, they play they play the in-between game pretty well, and, they're, and they, Draymond's probably with the arguably the best defensive player in the league, and, and he's smart. And, uh, you know, sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't. But, uh, again, you know, there are some things that we can do, and we'll see on uh, Saturday. So, obviously for us, that's, uh, that's the game. That's the whole, you know, we got to go after Saturday. Uh, coach of the back, uh, Martin Rogers, USA Today. Did, did you feel there was more clarity and consistency with how the game was called tonight? Obviously, there's a lot less questions about it. Yeah, you know, again, it's, you know, these are good refs. They were good refs last game. And, you know, we just had a few problems on a couple of plays. But uh, uh, these guys are good. And, uh, and you know, that didn't determine anything. They didn't determine anything. They just called the game the way it was, and it's good. Thank you. All right, guys.